I recently recorded two videos, one all about the Garmin Fenix Pace Pro feature and one all about the GoPro Max 360 camera. For various reasons, those videos went very, very wrong. Because the sun is out today, I'm going to go for a run using the Pace Pro feature and film it largely with the GoPro Max and create two separate videos. If you are expecting to watch a video all about, then you're in the wrong place because this one is all about, this could be a complicated day. The dog is coming with me because I don't know why. Why are you coming? Yeah, so that's the plan. What I will start with now is the cool opening that I did for the original version of these videos because I put thought and effort into that opening and it would be a shame to waste them. Last weekend I ran the Obstacle Course Racing World Championships, an event that is as brutal as their medal is huge. The plan this weekend just to recover and rest. A plan made even easier because the only local event going on was a 50 kilometer ultra marathon that I am clearly in no place to run anyway. And then I noticed they were calling it the X-Men run and they were offering a medal that has Wolverine on it. New plan. Okay, so the X-Men run did happen. I did do it. I did get my medal. It did have Wolverine on it which was very reassuring because I've run with these guys before, did what they call their forest run, thought the medal would have woods and trees on it. Forest Gump. I was a little bit worried this might have more to do with honouring transitioned women than superheroes, but all was well. So the medals were good, but the run was disastrous. I was exhausted from a run I'd done the previous week, very, very tired, couldn't run properly, let alone film, Hence, I filmed yesterday. There's gonna be some commentary from here today because filming yesterday, two videos at once, became a little bit complicated to say the least. Okay, go, no, uh, Garmin. The Garmin Pace Pro feature. Right, Garmin Pace Pro, very, very cool. First of all, how do you set it up? On the Connect app, you go into more, you go into training, you go into Pace Pro strategies, I put one in last night for today's run. I've called it 30K positive for reasons I'll explain in a moment. You can name it. You can set the distance, 30K here. The time, three hours. This is a gentle run today. Six minute kilometer pace, obviously, to achieve that. Splits for every kilometer. And then the clever bit. I'm going to explain this now more coherently than I did in the car yesterday. So first of all, positive and negative splits. Positive split means that you start off running faster and get slower as you progress. A negative split means you start off running slower and get faster as you progress. Many people will tell you that negative splits are the better way to run. And certainly if I'm doing something like a 10K or a half marathon, I do try and do that. I try and increase my speed during the race. But on a longer distance, certainly over half marathon, marathon, ultra marathon, I simply cannot run at the same pace or even faster as the race progresses, I slow down. That is how I've set Pace Pro up here. You can see that I've got it starting with a fast pace of 540 and going to a slowest pace of 622. If I wanted to, I could fiddle about with the slide bar and increase or decrease both the start and finish pace and the app will work out what I need to be running and when in order to average that six minute goal pace for the entire run. And if you scroll down, you can see that I start off with a 540 split, my second kilometer will be a 541, a 542 and so on, until eventually my last kilometer ends up being that slow 622 kilometer pace. And that is it, as soon as you're done, you hit send to watch, the next time you sync your watch to the app, it will send the Pace Pro feature across. What does it look like on the watch? You go into your run, select running, you go up for options, there's your Pace Pro plan, there's the 30k positive, and when you're ready to start running. Okay, so, we got lost. We're following a route off of some random download your favorite walk type app, so, we have no idea where we're going really. So getting lost meant that we're running a 6.10 pace at the moment. Now normally, 6.10 would be okay because we want to be averaging 
six mil kilometers. But the watch is telling me that I'm one minute 34 behind. So let me just explain what the watch face is showing at this point. At the top, in bold, what I should be doing at this point, a 541 split. In the middle, what I'm actually doing, a 607 split. The bar across the center shows how long is left of the current kilometer. So we're approaching the end of kilometer two, just 0.14 of a kilometer to go. And then at the bottom, the black background white text means I'm behind. If that image is reversed, white background black text, it means I'm ahead. And it is displaying the 134 deficit. So although a 607 doesn't sound like I'm too far off the pace, for an average six minute pace run, because it knows I should be going much quicker, 5.41 at this point, I'm already one minute 34 behind. I can check my watch and I know I need to move my butt. Okay, so we've done some road work. It means we're sitting at a 5.39 pace, just inside the 5.42 required. And we're now gonna see what happens when a new kilometer comes up. So here we go, we've now got a 5.44 pace for kilometer four and we're that 129 behind because we got lost we're not going to worry about that too much the dog seems good though so we might stick around 530 just make a a bit of that time that we missed back got a nice little easy bit along here so just going to take the chance to explain this pace pro stuff and the other data i can see the split for my current kilometer the split for my last kilometer, my overall average pace. So much more information available than I get on my Apple Watch for. That's why the Apple Watch is at home on my bedside table doing nothing. It has been since I got the Garmin. Uh, I can't imagine ever wearing that for exercise when I've got the Garmin available. Just so much more motivating. The one thing I miss about the Apple Watch is running without a phone. I used to have my music, my um, ability to make calls, receive texts. Now I'm back to carrying my phone with me if I want music and to be contacted. A Garmin Phoenix with a data plan would be pretty awesome. We've just whizzed across the field back there, nice and easy. So the watch told me I was doing a, a 5.30 six pace and i need to be doing a 545 so looks like i'm running a little bit ahead of where i need to be but that's okay because it's also telling me i've got that that roughly one minute 50 backlog from getting lost so i know that i'm going about the right pace if i was just working on the fact that i wanted to do six minute averages I'd be thinking I was going off way too fast. I know I'm not. Also, a couple of changes on the screen on the Garmin that tells me that my average pace is only fractionally over six minutes. So again, if I was looking at that data only, it would tell me that I'm probably about all right. But again, because I know that I'm going to slow over 30k, I know that's not right. And I do need to be putting in these slightly quicker, earlier kilometers. Again, any other watch just giving me one type of pace would be sending me off track. Up. Let's go. Okay, so we've just gone through halfway, 15 kilometers. So we're on to our 16th kilometer. Our required pace now, six minute kilometer pace, because being halfway, we would need to be doing exactly average pace for the whole distance. Three minutes, 23 behind. We're running slightly ahead of pace, just to try and ease into that a little bit. Now normally, being three minutes off the pace would be a worry because that's a lot potentially to make up. But because we know the Pace Pro feature is allowing for slower speed in this second half, as long as we hold it slightly under what we need, we should start chopping into that 324 deficit. Assuming we don't get lost, we got lost quite a lot today. 
The map is pretty good. Our map reading is not. I blame him. He looks like he's slowing down. But he's not because he saw a squirrel a minute ago and went nuts. So he's got plenty of energy. If he keeps lagging behind like that, I'm gonna tie him to a fence post and leave him. Which isn't as bad as it sounds because he's quite a cute looking dog. So there's somebody to take him in. They'd feed him up. When he gets his energy back, he'd, uh, he'd make his own way home. Incredible journey style. Problem solved. Obviously that's not true. He'd never find his own way home. He's useless. We're on around 22, 23 kilometers now. So around half marathon distance. Both feeling pretty comfortable. Um, Nixon enjoying the downhills more than the uphills. We're, uh, we're at out of 6.08. And we're running about a 6.05. We've still got that 3.30 deficit. We're not going to worry about that. That's a reflection of our poor map reading in the first half of the run. Not our inability to keep a pace. So we're going to let that 3.30 sit. And we're just going to basically run this home. Stick into the, uh, to the pace it's given us. Okay, almost back at the car. We're going to get the last kilometre change though. We're, uh, we're pretty much running on pace at the moment. 6.16, 6.15 required. We ate into that deficit a bit with a couple of quicker kilometers. We felt pretty good. Here we go. 6.17 for kilometer 27. We're two minutes 29 behind. All good. And we're done. Nixon is fueled by Baby Bell. If Baby Bell want to sponsor these videos, it saved me a fortune. Bad job. Saving the results. So we ended up with 26.7 kilometers and only a fraction off our six minute kilometer pace, 6.03. Actually a point on stopping the clock running sooner. It makes no difference. Um, I ran a test five kilometer run the other day where I set the pace pro for a five kilometer race or run. And when I finished it, I didn't stop. I waited to see whether it was a bit like a countdown timer and it isn't. If you finish a pace pro run, but you don't manually stop the watch the way you would normally, it will just keep on going. It will keep on recording time and distance. Pace Pro is basically like having somebody running with you as a pacer. If you ask them to pace you for 5k, but you choose to run six, they'll just hang around at the 5k mark wondering what you're doing. So there you go, Pace Pro, a feature that I'm now using all the time. And just for information, the other screens I have on the watch at the same time. So the front screen is showing total distance traveled, total time taken, and the average pace for the whole run. Second screen is showing my information, but for the specific lap that I'm currently on, also my heart rate at the bottom. Screen three shows my heart rate zone, and screen four, if it were on here, would be showing the Pace Pro. And that's it, hope you found it useful, hope you found it informative. If you did, like, subscribe, all that stuff. If you work for a large cheese-making corporation, cheese, he is waiting by the phone.